Hi everyone, I'm back and in this video I'm going to talk about this brand new pre-built PC from Corsair, the One i500. So it is pretty much meant to be an elegant little system that can still hold the highest end components that you can currently buy, uh, like an i9-14900K in this particular case, combined with an RTX 4090 graphics card. So. If you always wanted a super high-end, but also very compact little PC, and you don't really want to go through the trouble of building it yourself, this video is for you. So let's begin. The One i500 is 39 centimeters tall, 19 centimeters wide, and 30 centimeters deep. So in terms of volume, it is not the smallest PC ever, and it is a bit larger than the old Corsair One i300, but it still has a pretty small footprint and it is meant to be placed on a desk somewhere. Now, in terms of design, uh, they went with the uh, wood panel trend that has been very popular lately, combining a walnut wood front with a dark gray aluminum case, or you can go for a lighter gray case that comes with a maple wood front instead. Now, if you don't care for the wooden panels at all, uh, they plan to release all aluminum models as well with a, a dark or light aluminum front instead of the wooden one. But if you do care for that wooden look, uh, they will start offering a matching keyboard, mouse and mousepad set that should go perfectly with both uh, dark and light wood tones to complete the whole look of your setup. But that is just what they plan, it is not out yet. Now the build quality is pretty good and the whole system looks and feels very sturdy and very well made. The top grille is solid metal and as far as I can tell there is no flex in any of the panels, so it does seem like a premium product. And since it is Corsair you do get some RGB which in my opinion doesn't really work that well with the design of the case. Now you can control it by touching the front of the case which is a very interesting and a very unique way to do it and you can definitely experiment with it to see what you like the most but personally for me um, I would just set it to one single color or turn it off completely to not mess with that clean and elegant look that this case was meant to have. It comes with eight USB ports on the back, along with a 2.5 gigabit LAN and Wi-Fi, and uh, three display ports and one HDMI port out of the GPU. So that is plenty for most users out there. The front I.O. is decent. Uh, you get uh, two USB-A ports, uh, one USB-C port, and an audio jack. And I really do appreciate that the front I.O. is on the bottom of the case, which means that you won't have anything uh, sticking out too clearly on the top. And then especially so if you always use bulkier card readers or external storage, for example. It is very easy to open the case up if you want to clean the dust, uh, replace some parts or just add some upgrades. Uh, you just take off the sides, you remove these two screws right here and remove the side panel. From here you can clean the fans or if you remove two more screws you can get inside the top part properly to clean the radiators and around the motherboard. And if you remove four more screws you can also clean the part under the GPU or you can replace the power supply. And I have to admit I was a bit surprised to find a pretty typical micro ATX motherboard inside, the MSI B760M Mortar. The Corsair One i300 for example had a way more complicated split design, but this i500 looks much more like a standard PC when you open it up, which is actually a very good thing in my opinion, because it makes it so much easier to upgrade or repair. Uh, you get four memory slots, so you can easily add some extra memory if you wanted to. Uh, this version already has 64 gigabytes of RAM, but you can easily go to 128 gigabytes without throwing out what you already bought. And you can add an extra SSD as well. As I said before, you can even easily replace the power supply if something ever happens to this one. And uh, you won't really need to upgrade the CPU because new CPUs will likely need a new socket as well. But if the motherboard or the CPU die outside of warranty period, you can technically just go ahead and replace or upgrade both. Upgrading the graphics card will probably be the only semi-challenge because the GPU is water-cooled and that cooler is made specifically for this GPU and for this case, so replacing that will mean uh, either finding a pretty compatible graphics card or hope that Corsair makes a specific water cooler that fits this case and a future GPU, which is possible in theory. So I would say a GPU failure outside of the warranty period is your biggest risk with this design, but there are ways around it. 
So the GPU cooler has a 240 millimeter radiator and the CPU cooler has a 120 millimeter radiator with a single slim fan, which is a bit surprising because the 4900K tends to get very, very hot and there's clearly enough space for either a 240 millimeter radiator for the CPU or maybe for a thicker fan or an extra fan, for example. But it actually did surprisingly well. So the CPU boosts up to about 250 watts in short periods and it holds 200 watts during longer stress tests, which is a lot better than I expected to see here. Uh, you do get a little bit more out of a larger case with a larger cooler, but 200 watts is just great for a build of this size. And the GPU was not limited at all. So the RTX 4090 was pulling up to about 400 watts in Cyberpunk 2077, with the CPU pulling around 170 watts. And it did that with excellent thermal. So the GPU was running at 61 degrees Celsius with a hotspot of 70 degrees. And the CPU was warm, but still comfortably within limits, standing at 88 degrees Celsius. The internal air temperature was around 37 degrees, which is again great for a compact case and under my usual target of about 40 degrees. But the system does get pretty loud when you're stressing it fully. Now I typically aim to around 40 decibels at a 50 centimeter distance as a limit when I build my PCs because that is a reasonable noise level for any system under load that is sitting on your desk but this was significantly louder than that. And it is almost as loud when you just stress the CPU. So as I mentioned before, it really makes me wonder why they didn't add some more CPU cooling to keep the noise level down, because there is definitely enough space for either a thicker radiator or a thicker and more powerful fan or even both. And there is no user control over the fan behavior at all. So there's a software that lets you change the RGB, but that's pretty much it. So I really do think they should consider adding some profiles like uh, you would get on a laptop, for example, or even a physical BIOS switch like you get on GPUs, for example, so you can easily swap between a louder, higher performance mode and a quieter, a slightly slower mode, or maybe somewhere in between. And when I first got this case, it was pretty loud and idle as well, but Corsair already fixed that before its release uh, today. So it is now completely whisper quiet and idle, which is very important for a premium PC that is meant to be on your desk, which means that they can adjust the fan curves. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to get a software update, for example, that gives you some profiles to choose from as well. Anyway, since you do get a full power RTX 4090, the gaming performance is as good as with a typical 4900K RTX 4090 build that is much larger. Compared to my open test bench, uh, there's either no difference or only a frame or so, which is nothing significant and it is not noticeable. But do keep in mind that while this is the fastest hardware that you can buy right now, NVIDIA is expected to launch new GPUs later this year. So if you're not really in a super big hurry to buy a PC right now, it is definitely worth waiting a little bit longer for an possible updated version with the new GPUs later this year. But just like with the previous Corsair 1 pre-builds, the biggest challenge will always be the price. So if I take the EU price of this particular model with a 4900K and an RTX 4090, a 64 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD, the MSRP is 5,500 euros. Now, a similar spec ATX build will cost you closer to 3,500 euros. And if we go smaller and put together a compact ITX system using the Corsair 2000D case, it will cost you around 3,600 euros or 3,700 if you add some extra slim fans. And keep in mind, I wasn't even going for the cheapest parts on the market. So uh, based on the MSRP, you will be paying a premium of about 1,500 to 2,000 euros, which is just a lot of money. And I know that pre-built PCs are meant to save you time and trouble of thinking about parts in general, but for that difference, you can actually have a decent retailer build you something very similar, plus install it for you, and you will still have more than 1,000 euros left over. Now, this is just the recommended retail price, and in reality, the prices will probably drop over time. And looking at the US price uh, of $4,700 for this 
top tier model, it does seem like the price premium is already a bit smaller there to begin with, so it will also kind of depend on your region as well. But you shouldn't also expect that the Corsair 1 will ever be the cheapest or the best value option on the market because it wasn't really made to be that. It is a custom design that requires expensive tooling for something that will never sell in the same numbers as their mainstream cases and therefore it will cost more. And it is also aimed at people that like this design, that have enough money and that don't want to bother building a system and just want to, you know, simply order something that is done and ready to go. And surprisingly so, if I look at the poll that I ran on Twitter the other day, there clearly is a market for this sort of products where the pure convenience of it all is valued way more highly than what most people who build their own PCs would expect. So. If this is what you really like and you are fine with the price, it is a very, very nice system overall. It is stylish, it is well built, it is easy to clean, and it is about as fast as any PC you can get right now. Uh, just make sure that you're okay with it being loud under load. And as I said before, if you're not in a really big hurry to buy a new system right, right now, uh, it might be worth waiting a few months to see what the new GPUs will bring to the table. Now that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and for staying to the end of this video. If you liked it, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.